relation seven called uh, put call parity it has a uh, it's another uh, well-known result from uh, option theory it has a special name put call parity we, we've kind of seen already that uh, whenever i said something for calls so there was a similar a similar result for puts so so this is going to explain uh, actually why that happens uh, this is the put call parity it says that if you add this is only for the european versions i'm going to discuss the american versions uh, in a second uh, so your price of the european call plus discount the strike price has to be equal to the price of the european put plus the underlying uh, plus, the plus the price of the underlying okay this is a call and a put on the same underlying S with the same strike price K with the same maturity capital T. Right? These are equivalent call and a put. This, this says that they are related in a linear way. If I know the price of the call, then I can compute the price of the put. Another way around, if I know the price of the put, I can compute the price of the call. Simply by also knowing the looking up the price of the underlying and looking uh, and just computing the discounting strike price. Okay? So they have to be the same, uh, uh, theoretically. Uh, so let's let's show this. Uh, I could do this by by my uh, usual arguments uh, that uh, supposing that it's not like this. So I could I could first suppose that it's strictly less. Then I could suppose that it's strictly larger, and I could construct two arbitrages: one for strictly less, one for strictly larger. Uh, and, and then I would be done. Uh, however, I will here just do uh, in a in a single step uh, by by using the lower one price. Uh, I, I'm going just to look at uh, at the portfolio for which I know that this is the initial price, and the portfolio for which I know that this is the initial price. And then I will show that those portfolios have the same payments in the future at the same time, and therefore by the lower one price they have to have the same price today. Right. So I'm going to use the low one price uh, kind of uh, instead of uh, strictly large and strictly less argument and constructing arbitrage. Okay. So portfolio A uh, is going to be the one which uh, is kind of uh, suggested by this by uh, European call for this much for C of T and, uh, and uh, by this means invest discounted strike price at the risk-free rate in, into your bank account, let's say, or a bond. Uh, so that's portfolio A. And portfolio B, which is supposed to represent the right-hand side, buy one European put and buy one share of the underlying. Okay? I know the price of that is this. And the price of portfolio A is that. Okay? So I am claiming that these two portfolios uh, have the same payments in the future. Okay? Right, these are European versions and no dividends. I'm assuming no dividends here. Uh, without dividends and uh, without early exercise, I only have to check what happens at maturity. There is only there is only payments are happening only at maturity. So again, I have only to check whether uh, two scenarios: if S of T is larger than K then the call option is in the money uh, which means then on the what is going to be the portfolio i didn't write here the details we can do it here on the side uh, in this case uh, um, the, the left hand side portfolio at maturity will be worth s of t minus k that's from the call payoff uh, <coughs> Plus, this in the bank will increase to will increase to to uh, k. Uh, so plus k. So that's going to be this is going to cancel, and this is going to be s of t. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, this portfolio, if s of t is bigger than k, this is going to be zero. The put option is out of the money, and this is going to be simply worth s of t. S of t. One share it goes up to s of t, so it's equal. And I see now that this uh, there is a there is a, a typo here, right? This one should be s of t, t, and this one should be k, as we will see now. Okay, so uh, <coughs> this is uh, 
did you get that typo? You should look for typos together with me here. So if um, the other possible scenario, if s of t is less than k, then my call option is zero. This is still k in the bank. Left-hand side portfolio is just k. And the right-hand side portfolio, this is not zero now. The put option is in the money. And in fact, it's equal to k minus s of t. All right, that's the payoff of the put option. This one sure uh, is S of T, S of capital T now at maturity. So this will cancel, and K is equal to K. So in both cases, no matter what happens, the payoff of the left-hand side portfolio is equal to the payoff of the, the payoff of portfolio A is equal to the payoff of the portfolio B. Uh, therefore, their prices have to be the same initially which means that this left-hand side here has to be equal to the right-hand side here, which is what we want to prove. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, the uh, put-call parity, uh, we have exact relationship with the with between the price of the European call and the European put on the same asset, same strike price, same maturity, no dividends. There is a version with dividends, uh, which I'm not giving here. It might be in the homework. Uh, or you can just uh, Google it and find it. Um, all right, another one, the same thing, kind of a put call parity relation for American versions. Well, we don't have equalities there. We, we cannot exactly get the call price from the put price for American versions. Uh, what we can get is a bound on the difference. So, so I look at the difference of American call price minus American put price and I'm saying it has to be less than un the underlying price minus this kind of strike but larger than the, un the underlying price minus the strike. Okay? So if, if, if uh, R times uh, T minus T is small this is going to be pretty close to each other you have a pretty good idea what the difference is uh, they're going to be close, right, uh, in that case, uh, uh, to the right-hand side and to the left-hand side. So, so you would have a pretty good idea what the difference is. So how does this compare with the European uh, case? In the European case, uh, y this right-hand side was equality, right? For the European case, this was equality, uh, but, but not now. Yeah, for the European case, it was equality. So let me let me prove this. Uh, let's first prove this uh, right hand side. Uh, should be it's it's a bit easier. Uh, so well th that we can just we know it's true for European versions, right? Now the right hand side doesn't matter whether it's European or, or uh, American. There are no options here. Uh, for capital C in the European case. What do we know about the uh, American price if there is no dividends? Well, we learned uh, a slide or two ago that this is in fact equal to lowercase c of t, right? So these are equal. Uh, so this doesn't change either. The only thing that changes is the American put price relative to the European put price. Uh, but uh, we know that this one is is larger than the than the European small p, right? So with the minus with the minus sign, you're gonna get something less, and that's why I have less here instead of equal, right? So everything stays the same as this kind of strike price. Even the American call price is e equal to the Amer European call price when there are no dividends. Only p goes up from lowercase p to uppercase p, which is larger. American price is larger. With the minus sign, it's less. So this difference is less than uh, what it was in the European case, which was this, uh, this difference here. Yeah, so that, that, that was e easy uh, from, from knowing the put call parity for, for, for the European versions and from knowing that capital C is equal to the lowercase c for the European versions. All right, and finally, uh, let's, let's show the left-hand side. Well, that one I will do the in the standard way. Suppose not. 
I suppose I have strict in uh, strictly larger here. If I have strictly larger here and I put p move p to this side and move minus k to this side, that's the same as having s of t plus capital P of t strictly larger than capital C of t plus k. Okay? Uh, the underlying price plus American put strictly assume it's strictly larger than the uh, call American call price plus the strike price. I want to show this is not possible. Uh, I want to show there is arbitrage if this is the case. The same argument. This is expensive. This is cheap. Sell one share. Sell the American put. You have more than enough money to buy the American call and uh, deposit K in the bank. Yeah. So I have, I, st I still have some money left after doing that. Sell these two and buy these two from that money. You still have money left. And I want to show that money will survive. Uh, I will never lose in the future if this is the case. So let's check that. Again, these are American. There is American options here, so I have to check what happens if the one I'm short is exercised. Right? I sold the put option, American put option. I have to see what happens if it's exercised. If it's exercised at some time t tau, uh, then uh, well, uh, then uh, I'm short the put. It means I have to buy the underlying by paying k from the buyer of the put option from the holder of the put option yeah. so so that's what i have to do do i have money to do that uh, well yeah i i put k in the bank so i definitely even if it's exercised right away i have k at least k in the bank if it's exercised later i have more than k increase it increased at an interest uh, so i have i have k in the bank uh, I can buy uh, the share when the put is exercised from the holder of the put and then I can cover my short position because I sold the stock so I can cover my short position and I'm fine. Pay K, get the share, close the short position. And the, the other possibility is that P is never exercised, that the American put is never exercised. Uh, well, then I can wait to maturity and I can exercise the call option, which I'm long. I bought the call option. I can exercise uh, the call, the American call at maturity by paying K, getting one share. I have K. In fact, at maturity, I will have more than K. I will have K time, uh, times the interest. Uh, and uh, I get the share, pay K, get the share. I can, I can again close my short position. Right? So I'm also fine if, if P is never exercised. So in either case, I'm fine. Arb arbitrage, this cannot hold with strict lar strictly larger. Therefore, it has to be less or equal. All right. So we prove we prove that one, that one too. All right. That's uh, that's it for now.